Hello YouTube! This is Computer Worm 42, and this is going to be my very first fanfiction reading. I've been wanting to do fanfiction reading for quite some time now, but I just never got around to it. Although one day when I was looking up some fanfiction on my favorite fanfiction site, filmfiction.net, I stumbled across this particular one and thought I couldn't pass up the opportunity to do it. So, this one fanfiction, and before we do it, yes, I will warn you, it is a Fallout Equestria spin-off. Now, I am aware that there have been... This is probably the most spun-off fanfiction that has ever been written in existence of fanfiction, but this particular uh, spin-off of the original Fallout Equestria fanfiction, which if you haven't read it, I recommend you at least give it a try, because anyway, um, this fanfiction is spin-off of the Fallout Equestria. I thought this one, this one is far exceeds and excels many of the other Fallout Equestria fanfiction uh, spin-offs in more ways than one. So here I bring it to you. Now, I'm not going to pass any judgments on the quality of the fanfiction, as different strokes for different folks, they say, but I invite you as the reader, or rather listener, to make your own opinion and to decide what you think of this fanfiction. And um, one major caveat here before I begin, I am, no, I am not reading one of my own fanfictions. This was written by someone who is completely different. I don't even know who they are. I just stumbled across them one day and yeah. So here we go. Let's jump right in, shall we? And now, for Fallout Equestria 2, The New Lightbringer by Drawing Sign. Tags, Romance, Sad, Random, Crossover, Adventure. Five years, new time period, new Lightbringer. Little Pip is dead and DIA. Some pony new takes he place. A alicorn named Celestial Pip Buck Spectrum is the next key to survival and renewal of the wastelands of what used to be the magical land of Equestria. Meet the new Lightbringer through his lives, everyday life, struggles, and adventures. Chapter 1 Intermission Welcome to 25 years after the death of Little Pip. 25? I thought you said in the description it was only 5. Anyway, this story isn't in Stable 2, 101, or 111. It's in the accessible Stable 125. Stable 125 commercial plays. If you have seen this, you are invited to come to Stable 125 to stay for the nuclear apocalypse. Where you can live a normal life with the safety of 25 inch thick steel. The rooms are fitted with the newest technology of computing, gaming, and everything else that will suit a family of 12 or more. For couples, dot dot dot, the commercial stops playing and was deleted from a pit buck in room 14. An audio file entitled How to Survive the Apocalypse by Ditsy Do was opened and read by the voice of Derpy Hooves. A blood curdling groan at first. Then a ahem <coughs> from a Pegasus pony and a voice as clear as day is heard. Hi, I'm Ditsy Do, but you can call me Derpy Hooves. I am recording this for your survival of the outside world. The recording file is paused and audio file is closed. The pit buck is turned off. On with the story. Setting, Vault 125, Room 000014, Luxury Class, Class A-D. 
The room has a large desk with shelves covered in circuit packages, data sheets, and circuit boards. On the desk is a small project for a invention expo and a book entitled Encyclopedia of Integrated Circuits. What does this stuff belong to? Well, that would be Celestial Pitbuck Spectrum himself. Well, this was before his adventures outside Stable 125 and before he met Little Pip's spirit. Meeting her is in about five minutes. Celestial Spectrum is an alicorn. He never thought the out of the outside world was interesting. Let's see what's on his mind. Memories and memories I never experienced before. Whose memories are these? Said Celestial, feeling down but a deeper depression, a depression that will last for five days. All of these memories actually belong to Little Pip. The Pip Buck that Celestial is wearing was delivered from a zombie that was originally a male mare. Did she do, to be specific? The Pip Buck was left behind after a knock on the front of the stable door. It had a note on it saying, and there's no note here. The note was put in the DIA stable attendance wall. There is a memorial underneath the note with a picture of Little Pip as the centerpiece. When Celestial was born ten years later, the Overmare ordered to have the Pip Buck put onto Celestial when he turned six, and had it on since. Celestial gets up and continues the project he started five days ago. He gets out a brand board, or brand new board, and starts making the CPU of the project. CPU, Central Processing Unit, the main brains of the motherboard of computers. He levitates the book and turns to pages 63, 131, and 235. On these pages are the control until arithmetic logic until, and the circuit diagram for the piece CPU. All the things needed for it. He looks through all the shelves for a computer chip and some wires. All he could find were circuit blocks, wires, RAMs, ROMs, and a broken pit buck. He puts the book down and looked at the pit buck carefully. It had an insignia on it entitled Velvet Remedy. He noticed that there is a few screws missing. He takes off the main panel to hear a male voice as he opened it. Looking for this? Said the mysterious male as a figure of grey unicorn with a brown mane, green eyes, and a pit buck for a cutie mark appeared. <coughs> Celestial turns around and sees the pony. He just freezes and stares. The mayor was levitating a circuit board with a 32-bit CPU on it. Celestial nods and takes the circuit board. The pony disappears with a giggle. That was weird. Who was she? Wait, did she know what I needed? Said Celestial, thinking to himself. He turns around, back to the desk. He noticed a note on his project. He reads it. This is probably going to help in the future. Your buddy, Little Pip. He thinks again and remembered that the mayor he say was her. He seems to be slightly confused on what he is making and remembered what it was. Some kind of a renewal device or perhaps a mega spell reverser. He puts the idea in his list inventions to come around to notebook. He continues to work on the current project. He gets a flat breadboard and starts soldering the circuit the board. He starts wiring other components to another breadboard and links them up together. He hears a beep and then a buzz. He thinks to himself, and an idea hits. He removes the display screen from the broken pit buck and gathers some wires. Attracting the screen to the main circuit, the screen turns on. It had an emblem entitled LBCATCC, Lightbringer Collaboration and Technology Computing Computer. What the? said Celestial, confused and curious of what it meant. 
A voice recognition software reads his voice and says, Welcome, Celestial Pipbox Spectrum. Celestial flinches when he heard the AI system turned on and said something without warning. Celestial was surprised and interested, so he finished his project and set it aside. A few hours have passed, and it was 11.56 a.m., almost lunchtime. Celestial went through the frig and made some lunch. <laughs> it's not an ordinary lunch like dandelion sandwiches, hay fries, PB and J, or soup. He usually eats what his father usually has for lunch or sometimes for a snack. He has fish fingers and custard. Celestial likes them cold. It helps cool his mind down. Celestial thinks too much and too hard, making him even more different from the other ponies in every stables. Celestial heads off to the lunchroom after he turned off the lights and closed the door behind him. The halls were like a ghost town. It was silent. Celestial can hear the buzzing of the lights on the ceiling, the water flowing through the pipeline, and the beeping of supercomputers as well. Author's note. This first chapter it took a while to write. <laughs> yeah, my bet. Well, that was that. That was the end of the first chapter of the fanfiction. A second chapter has not yet been published. But if it does get published, I may continue on with the reading. And now, let us, if you stick around, let us look at the comments for this particular fanfiction and the particular chapter. <clears throat> Who Needs Sleep says, If I may make a suggestion, you should try to find something that makes your Fallout Equestria story unique, instead of simply being Fallout Equestria 2. Think along the lines of Horizons. Set in a different area of the wasteland with different characters that don't really cross over. Obvious exception is obvious. With plots that don't interfere with each other. You can read either of them and they can stand alone as stories, or you can read them as being set in the same universe. Drawing Sign, the author of this story, replies, This book is set in a different location, but close by to Stable 2. Stable 125 was built under Sugar Cube Corner, and Little Pip's spirit will act as a guide to help Celestial with some of the things in the wastelands of Equestria. La Barata replies that, uh, that didn't even start to address the concerns he brought up. Normal says, Hello there, I saw a few issues with your story and thought I could offer some helpful advice. First all, with your title, would it have been hard to actually type out Fallout Equestria? I saw the title and was hoping for a Fall of Equestria story. But maybe that's just me. On to the description. Five years, new time period, new light bringer, blah blah blah, adventures. Some easily fixable things here. To be grammatically correct, you should spell out your numbers, five instead of five. I'm going to assume, until you tell me otherwise, that DIA means dead in action, in which case I would recommend others saying, either saying dead or DIA, it is redundant and unnecessary, blah blah blah. Dead Readers says, Captain, detecting large quantities of bullshit. But really. You need to rethink your story, because after reading Intermission, feels like this story is going to get downvotes up the ass. And heck, the main protagonist is an alicorn. A freaking alicorn. Mario Addict says, You have made a terrible mistake. I admire you for trying, and I encourage you to keep writing. But you have still made a terrible mistake in trying to create a sequel to the original greatness. May the internet have mercy on your soul. Caloric Mango replies, He will need all the mercy the internet has, and Jesus himself to be his editor to try and match the original in greatness. Battle Log replies, Implying Fallout Equestria is even that great in the first place. People really should read books more often. Echo Off says, I think I died of laughter reading this. Not because the plot was funny, but because it was done so bad it became funny. So bad, it's good. Dead Readers says, 
the author haven't put any updates on his story nor his blog. Seems we hit him hard. Drawing sign replies, Actually, I was in Oklahoma and my schedule was messed up. I am rewriting this book on Microsoft Word for the meantime. I will still be posting updates when I have time. I am trying my best, though. Oh, so we may, we may get more chapters of this in the future. Dead readers, replies. Is it going to be a different Fallout Equestria story, like if you listened what Who Needs Sleep said? Or is it going to be the same crap like this? Because if it's not different, then this must be a troll fic. I also like that you're taking it pretty well. Like with all that downvotes, the criticisms and the comments, judging your response, you're taking it well. And a picture which reads, you're gonna need a bigger bait. Drawing sign says, troll fic, I'm not that type of author. Then drawing sign says, I am probably make a different version to intermission. The current one is for when I do a Fimfic read series on YouTube. So there we have it, folks. <clears throat> From the author himself, we have promises for additional chapters and a reading of this thing on YouTube. Now again, I say I am not the author, I am not drawing sign, but I just wonder if I've beat him to being able to put it up on YouTube. That's all, folks. If you have any comments or suggestions on how I can improve my fanfiction readings, as this was my very first fanfiction reading, um, then feel free to comment on me, or on my channel and this video. If you have any suggestions on how the author of this fan, of this fanfiction drawing sign can improve the fanfiction or his writing, then go to his fanfiction page, which is in the the link is in the description below, and make the comments. If you have a fanfiction account, don't make the comments right here on this about the story right here on this page, because again, on my page, because again, I did not write this. So, I hope you have the rest, a good rest of the day, and I'll see you around, hopefully.